So, hello. Uh, I'm Gina Leticia. I'm a singer, songwriter, and producer. And I'm here right now with Miss Nina Nesbitt. How are you, Nina? Hello. I'm good. How are you? I'm absolutely excited to talk about uh, your new music and just musician things, you know? So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm actually a big fan of your music. Oh, thank you. Um, I knew you through uh, LAB, Life's a Bitch. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a very iconic title and song. And I watched the video too. And I was like really intrigued by the plot. Because it was yes. like you seeing yourself all bloody and can you tell me a little about the plot and the meaning of the song yeah so the song is kind of just about like everything's falling apart around me but I'm just gonna keep going keep powering through and the music video basically I asked my best friend if she would dress up as me for the day and be, be in the video so the two like the double Nina you see is me and my mate Sophie um and yeah it's just kind of about like it's like everyone's got a darker side like a a side that kind of it's like the devil on your shoulder type thing um and it's about learning to kind of make friends with that instead of trying to run away from it if that makes sense I bet it's like a healing moment for you to write about personal things like this huh yeah, definitely. I feel like, I don't know about you, but writing songs is kind of like a form of therapy. Yeah, yeah. I think it's um, it's so freeing to write about things that you go through yourself. I mean, like some musicians write about like love songs and um, probably like things other people can relate to. And that's okay. That's cool. And that's fun. But like, there are some musicians that write about like healing and self-development and darker themes that I really respect because I bet it's a lot to do, you know, because you go through it too. So it's like kind of healing yourself. Yeah, definitely. I feel like writing it is kind of therapeutic like I say like kind of cathartic get all the feelings out but then sometimes the thought of putting it out is yeah that's the scary part isn't it because it's like oh my god what was that world is (laughs) yeah it's I don't know it makes me feel a little bit sick I'm not gonna lie (laughs) um yeah I'm about to put an album out now and I feel so nervous because it's really just kind of exposing yourself to the world I guess so yeah it's nerve-wracking yeah, but it's kind of inspiring to see artists do that too. I mean, they can be raw about their emotions. And me as the listener, it makes me want to be real too. So thank you. Definitely. Oh, thanks. I'm definitely inspired by other like musicians such as Alanis Morissette, Taylor oh, Swift, nice. Dolly Parton, you know, women that really like wear their heart on their sleeve and yeah, just get it all out. I think it's inspiring. So yeah love that so talking about like uh, deep songwriting your uh, one of your latest release pressure makes diamonds I yes. bet it's like um it's something I I feel like it's something you went through yourself so can you tell me a little bit about that song yeah so pressure makes diamonds I wrote I think I just turned 25 and I don't know about you I don't know how old are you I'm just turning 20 like next month okay you're fine (laughs) but when you hit 25 I feel like people kind of talk to you in a different way like you're seen obviously more as an adult and people started asking me when are you having kids when are you settling down when are you getting married and I was like whoa like when did all this start to happen um and it was kind of just a song about that but also more specifically about being a a woman in the music industry and just kind of navigating my way through that um or something I've been doing since I was 17 so I've definitely like felt the pressures of that 
whether it be like body image or who you're dating, um, how that affects your career, like just so many things, um, or even just getting older and how people view you as a pop artist. So it was kind of just a whole bunch of things, but turned into a fun, catchy pop song. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like, I kind of relate to like the problems you said, because I imagine as uh, a female artist, you kind of have the societal pressure in kind of like two things because first of all you're you're a female woman uh raised in a society that has expectations you know when are you going to get married or have kids Mm -hmm. or live that stereotypical life but at the same time uh being an artist I bet it takes so much of your time to work you know like to develop your career and maybe it takes so much time that you can't do both you know so i kind of i kind of get um how that uh could be pressure but you turned that to a really catchy song with a really a really good message pressure makes diamonds that's really inspiring thank you yeah i think you've got to just take these things and make them make you work harder and you know, prove that you can do it, for sure. So I think you have been in the music industry for what, about, has it reached 10 years? 10 years, yeah. Yeah, oh my God, okay. I'm just- I know. (laughs) I'm just coming around like two years. So um, I have a lot to learn from you. Um, (laughs) Yeah. What would you say is like the one thing that's been your biggest glow up? Oh, my biggest glow up. I think maybe the songwriting in particular. Um, When I first started, I didn't write with anyone else. Like I didn't collaborate. I just wrote on my guitar and I didn't even think about melodies. I literally just had words in my notebook that I put to music um and then I got dropped from a label and became a songwriter for a bit um for about two years for other artists and I absolutely loved it and I learned how important melody is and how I think like 99% of the world listens to melody before lyrics so that was a shock and I think it improved my songwriting and just made me like better at my craft um probably that or just like having confidence on stage because I I don't think I'm like a natural performer it's something I've had to work at and just get more confident with that's nice I think it comes with experience that glow up yeah definitely and I think when you first start you feel like everyone knows what they're doing and then as the years go by you figure out actually no one knows what they're doing so you've just got to do what you love and do it with passion and then see how it goes really yeah that's that's so nice yeah it comes um it comes with experience to learn to trust yourself isn't it yeah definitely yeah yeah and uh what do you say about like emotionally uh have you have you gotten better at like uh, dealing with the pressure that comes with your work um I'd like to say yes but I think I'm still a workaholic who gets quite stressed but I think as I've got older and done it longer I'm definitely more secure in myself I think when I started I was 17 and I didn't even know who I was like I was so worried about what people thought about me and how I was perceived and if I was successful or not and I think now I kind of don't really care like as long as I love what I'm doing and I'm happy doing what I'm doing and I think it's going well like I just don't care as much what people think about me but I think that's definitely something that happens with age you definitely become more secure in yourself I think that that comes through in your music yeah oh good I love how your EP um it talks about things that makes a person a person you know um 
specifically i love your song dinner table oh yeah, yeah thanks yeah it's it's such a topic that most artists don't really um sing about and i love it about that song so yeah thank you thank you yeah um, it's quite a niche concept isn't it yeah, yeah. i love it i love it um so about uh, let's talk about the video for pressure makes diamonds yeah uh, there you play like a bunch of these female stereotypical characters that maybe we see much in fiction or like maybe in society in general maybe we do that too and uh it's something that's really relatable actually uh i love that it's relatable to all societies you know in indonesia it's like that too so okay can you, cool. yes can you tell us a little bit about where you got that idea and why did you choose that concept to go with the, the music Yeah, um, well, it's a bit crazy, but I th- <laughs> think I just wanted to have fun with it. I think, um, yeah, I just wanted to, I guess, like, I can only tell the story from my point of view, like things I've experienced. So I wanted to do that. And we kind of said, oh, just like pick your insecurities, but make them fashion. So it's like changing the narrative on your insecurities so I think there's me with like a hundred chicken fillets coming out my bra because I used to want a boob job when I was younger and now I've just learned to embrace that I have small boobs so I was like well there's one um there's like one about getting older so I'm like this old woman who's kind of slut dropping in a field and it's just having a laugh like not taking it too seriously and just kind of like embracing what you perceive your flaws or like um anxieties to be um and kind of just yeah just having fun with it that's so cool I think the fun take on it was really helpful to like talk about these topics that may be like a little heavier but you made it so fun thanks I think like if anything's scary or worrying if you can laugh at it it becomes less scary so that was kind of the plan so true okay So you're releasing an album soon. Yes. yes. It's called Elska. Wait, yes. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Elska. Okay. Uh, so you said that the album celebrates life in all of its complexities, as well as love in every form imaginable. And I heard that the album was made in the show of introspection, loss, and fear of lockdown. So can you tell me a little bit about what this album is about to you? Yeah, so um, it's called Elskar, which means to love in Swedish. I'm half Swedish, half Scottish. Um, My gran lives there. I'm spending quite a bit of time over there writing. And I'd never written there before because Stockholm is one of the best places. Um, And... Yeah, I just absolutely loved it. I loved all the producers there and just decided I wanted to make an album. Um, so some of it was written before all the lockdowns and stuff, um, like Pressure Makes Diamonds, Teenage Chemistry, all that. And then obviously lockdown hit, so I couldn't get into the country. So it was just trying to finish it over Zoom or here in my home studio. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to pick a subject that I felt was very universal and felt by everyone which is love and kind of just really hone in on it and um think about all the different types of love because I think people just assume oh it's romantic but you have love between friends family yourself and it's kind of just an album about all those all those things definitely that's so true there's lots of different forms of love And this used to be like a topic that I'm very scared to write about, like love. For me personally, I haven't experienced like that romantic love. So I don't get why people are so like um, obsessed over it. But what you said was true. Like there's so many forms of love. Just because you haven't experienced romantic love doesn't mean you don't know what love is about. There's For love, sure. yeah. There's love with your friends, with your family, and it's something that 
like you said, people, all, all people can relate to. Definitely. And I think you can also, like, I remember when I was younger, just the idea of what it might be like to be in love, I guess. It can be just an idea in your head. Who's your biggest inspiration when you when you write? Well, when I'm writing, probably Halsey. Halsey. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. Love she's her. Bit, yeah, she's a bit like uh, straightforward with her feelings. I think um, there's no filter, you know. So yeah, I love her uh, poetic take on lyrics. Have you ever seen her live? No, unfortunately, but I really want to. Yeah, she's so good. Yeah, uh, what's your inspiration? Like, where do you get it? Um, I feel like it's all just like um, I don't know. It just sort of comes out. Like it, I think I don't really um talk about my feelings or what I'm thinking a lot with my friends like I'm quite I think I'm quite closed um but when I'm writing it just seems to pour out I think it's just from my subconscious just whatever I'm actually feeling that I don't even think about so sometimes it's just like a release of of whatever has happened but it could literally be from anyone or anything so it's quite scary for the people around me yeah, but it's it's so cool that um, you don't force your feelings to like people around you. I think I kind of relate to you too because I don't really tell people my emotions, but I kind of keep it to myself. And then um, when there's a time for me to let it go, I let it go. You know, so it yeah. comes to like the correct um, subject. You know. <laughs> sort of like yeah. that yeah that's amazing um Nina Indonesians here love Scottish artists um oh. you know churches Louis Capaldi Travis and the legendary Belle and Sebastian um they've got tons of fans here so here comes the big question would you like to someday maybe come here and play some of your songs I would absolutely love to come to Indonesia. Um, I got offered a tour of Asia just before COVID hit. And I was like, yeah, maybe, I don't know, maybe we could do it next year because the timing just wasn't quite right. And then everything shut down and I was like, oh my God, why didn't I go? So gutted. Um, so I'd absolutely love to come. I've not really seen much of it and I'd definitely love to see Indonesia um yeah where would the best city be I'd say you uh for recreational purposes you would have to experience Bali yes of course <laughs> and if you want to like hang around uh play some music meet uh Indonesian artists you can go to Jakarta you know okay would you and recommend you know, me like who are the best artists in Jakarta apart from you of course <laughs> apart from me um there's uh Pamunkas. he he sings a lot of like Beatles vibe songs you know I think you okay. love him yeah and cool. there's um there's uh Tulus I think you love his uh, songs it's kind of acoustic and his word his words are really poetic Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. You have to write them down for me before I go. Of course, I, I will. My pleasure. So, uh, what, where are, who are some like cool artists uh, from Scotland that I should know? Oh, from Scotland. Um, have you ever heard of Paolo Natini? No, no. He's really that? good, Paolo Natini. He is amazing. His voice is so good. Um, he's got a very soulful voice, um, great songwriter. He's huge in Scotland. I think he just had a number one album in the UK, actually. He's really big. Definitely worth checking out. Um, there's a new girl as well, actually, called O Anderson. Um, and she's great. I think she's from Edinburgh as well. She's really good, kind of like pop stuff, um, really good voice. 
Um, obviously, Lewis Capaldi, who you already know. I feel like you you know a lot of Scottish artists already. Um, Katie Tunstall, she's another really big artist. Yeah, there's a lot of um, a lot of Scottish music out there for sure. That's cool. I'll definitely check it out. Also, I wanted to ask. You said that you're a producer as well. How did you get into that? Yes, uh, two years ago. Uh, by the start of the lockdown wow when the world changed (laughs) I uh, started to learn producing because um, in my high school years I actually love writing poems and uh, I had a thought where maybe I could turn them into songs so I had this goal in my mind that I wanted to make a song but I didn't know any like musician friends so I was uh I was really confused like where am I gonna make a song you know yeah so yeah when when I had that problem I was just like yeah maybe I I should do it myself you know so slowly I started to learn uh like in the digital audio workstation by myself through YouTube and uh yeah little by little I started to make like a legit song wow it's been two years now so the rest is history oh I love that amazing do you have any female producers that you look up to like have you heard of Imogen Heap I've never heard of them oh but my uh, I think I really love um Actually, I don't know a lot of female producers, unfortunately. I'm always yeah. curious because <laughs> there's not a lot of them out there. But Imogen Heap, you should definitely check her out. She has a documentary about making her album in her house. And she's incredible, like really, really good producer. Do you know, um, you might know her song Hide and Seek when you hear it. I think it was sampled in another song. And she also produced Clean for Taylor Swift. Um, but she's really interesting. She records a lot of sounds in the house. So she'll like pick up a glass of water or like whatever and just turn it into sound. She's really, really creative. Um, would definitely recommend checking her out. That's so cool. She records her own samples. Yeah. And she plays like everything. She's, yeah, really good. That's amazing. I think like one artist that's also producer, uh, a female producer that I look up to is Seth Deliza. Have you heard of her? No. But she's a really amazing artist. Um, actually, I liked her a lot because her visuals are crazy. Like when you check her out, your mind is going to be blown because that's okay. exactly my reaction. So yeah, Seth Deliza. Okay, cool. I'll have to check her out. You need to write me a little list. <laughs> of course, I will. I will. I'll write you one back. Okay. Um, Nina, it's been so nice talking to you. I feel like through this talk, I've learned a lot. Um, and it's really inspiring to see like an artist that writes about their journey, journey so um, truthfully, you know? Like you don't, I feel like you don't hide your um your development emotionally when you write your lyrics so I love that and I love that for you so it's been an amazing talk uh thank you so much same here thank you and I'm gonna check out all those people that you recommended as well of course I'll write you like a mini list mini recommendation list amazing hopefully see you playing in London soon I hope so too. Uh, Hopefully you will come to Jakarta real soon, yeah? Manifesting it for both of us. (laughs) Manifesting it. All right, Nina, it's been so nice talking to you. I hope I can meet you in person real soon. Definitely, you too. Yeah, Uh, thank you for the talk. I hope you have a really nice day. You too. Bye. Bye.